Hey guys, welcome back to Foam Dude. In this video, we're going to proceed to the layer addition phase. As I've described before, SnapEx Mesh offers you three functionalities. First is castellated mesh, second is snap mesh, and the third is layer addition. So in case if you haven't followed the previous tutorials, feel free to check them out. Or if you just want to learn the layer addition phase, uh, stay tuned for more in this video. So in the previous video, we have created a mesh and we have left it off at the snap stage. So let's go back and open our SnapX mesh, uh, uh, SnapX mesh file. So the first thing that we have to do is turn off our uh, snap control and turn on the layer addition control. And uh, we are not going to take a look at uh, any other things uh, that we have already covered before. So we will directly go to the layer controls. You have to specify the layers on all the surfaces that you wish. You can select multiple surfaces with the dot star feature. So all the surfaces that begin with the name train will be selected with train dot star. Although in this video, there is just uh, one surface with the name train. And I'm also going to add some layers on the bottom surface. Uh, bear in mind that I have not tweaked any advanced controls. So the layers that you will see uh, will be very coarse and probably they won't be free flowing or uh, perfectly connected kind of layers. So uh, given that, let's find out how, how the SnapX Mesh understands uh, how the layers are created. So there are two ways to specify layers. First way is you specify the minimum layer thickness at the wall interface and also specify the expansion ratio and then you can work your way backwards and calculate the layer thicknesses perpendicular to the plane. The second way is you specify the final layer thickness and of course the number of layers and specify the expansion ratio and way, work your way towards the surface to determine what's the minimum layer thickness. And SnapX Mesh allows you to do both of the options. The switch which determines whether you're choosing option one or option two is relative size of switch. As you can see at this moment, it's kept as true. That means it's going to work, uh, work out the final layer, work out the minimum layer thickness based on the final layer thickness and the expansion ratio. If you turn the switch uh, to false, then you will have to specify the first layer thickness and expansion ratio, and it will work the final layer thickness all by itself. One thing to note is the final layer thickness is specified as two, which means the final layer thickness is half the bulk size. Uh, what that means is where the layer will terminate, the final layer will terminate, it will determine what's the bulk mesh thickness at in the vicinity. It will divide that by two and take that as the final layer thickness. So given that, let's save our SnapX mesh and go back to our working directory. So one thing to note is if you just execute SnapX Mesh, then it automatically looks for uh, it, it automatically looks for the poly mesh in the constant directory. So what we are going to do is we are going to remove the the poly mesh that exists in constant directory, and we are going to move the poly mesh that we have generated previously after the snap in the constant folder. So. I just I did a blunder. I removed the constant directory. Should have to, I, instead I should have just uh, deleted the poly mesh. So I'm going to create the constant directory again and move my mesh from two to constant. So your constant folder now should have the poly mesh directory. And now you will run snappyx mesh. Okay, we are in trouble. So let's go back. And I'm going to go grab my tri surface. It was a mistake. So you have to be very careful when you use the rm slash rf because it may lead to some unintended consequences. There we go. Now the layer addition phase is working its way and we should see the layer addition 
finish in probably about 30 to 35 seconds. There we go. And in the summary, you will see that on the train surface, it, it has only added 74% thickness. And on the bottom surface, it has only added about 54%. Um, it's a it's not necessarily a good sign, but like I said before, uh, we probably expected this kind of behavior since we haven't tuned any additional controls. And also, the background mesh that we started with itself was uh, very coarse. So let's look at the let's look at the transformation. So instead of loading the time directories, we know our mesh resides in the constant directory. So we will directly see the final version of the mesh now and let's look at let, let's look at the layers all right i think it has there we go and now you can see the layers have been added but they are not continuous they are breaking at certain locations it's not a uniformly covered surface and also the layers at the at the bottom surface are pretty bad. Um, there are certain controls that you can change to get more uniform surface coverage, and I will cover those videos. Uh, I will cover those settings and their influence on the mesh quality in the separate videos. So stay tuned for more, and see you in the next one.